back to the channel. Today I'm going to uh, be swapping out these batteries uh, with the new ones that are nice and balanced. Showing y'all basically how I'm rebalancing the other ones. Uh, the process I go through and what I do. I may uh, go ahead and uh, throw in another video this weekend on, uh, well, what that thing is. It's a solar generator I made. It currently has an EMP cloth around it. Uh, and yeah, I know, it's not super tight. Better than nothing. Anyway, I think I'll show you all that for something a little different. But this video is going to be about the batteries and continuing on with this system I've got set up. I'm also in the process of working to uh, add my new solar panels. So after I get these balanced, swap them out and get the new ones working on balancing, I think I'm going to add to my solar and get the rest of my panels up now that I've got something that'll uh, handle it. So that's what this one's going to be about. I did not film me carrying these 100 pound batteries instead i was hitting the photograph button thinking it was the video button it was not so i've got these wonderful photos to show with you as i speak over them wasn't much the video anyway just a bunch of grunting and groaning and uh and working out basically carrying these batteries all over the house uh, i really need a better way of carrying these things because if i dropped them it would probably crush my toes ruin my day so we're going to kind of start with these batteries already on my uh work desk top and uh, go from there all right <laughs> got these unbalanced bad boys here and I start working. I'm going to have to flip them because right now they're set for mode. Negative, positive, negative, positive. So I'll have to flip them so that they're all positive, all negative. Now, last night I turned the AC import on and charged these bad boys all the way up to the point the BMS was about to turn them off. I wanted to do that because cause even though this is a great charger and tester, it only does 40 amps. Through the AC, I could dump 100 amps into these things. And get them topped up a lot more. That way they're fairly close to top end already. So when I hook this on, I'm not waiting three, four, or five days just for it to finish topping it off. And then I can start balancing them. So now to start putting this together and uh, balancing it. I'll show you how I do that. What I typically do is go ahead and loosen these bolts. Try to get them even where they're both on the same side. And then to turn them. I just remove the uh, compressor, I guess you'd say. <laughs> remove that, and now I can flip these. Keeping the spacing, I always use spacing to try to help protect the batteries from one another. This is really just a cutting board for uh, food, food cutting. You can get it at Walmart, and you can cut them to the size of the battery so they fit there. They're non-conductive, uh, and it's kind of nice, and I will put them in between. So that they're not touching and something doesn't happen in case they try to touch. Alright, now I've got all the positives on one side and all the negatives on one side. Now I can just put in a bus bar, go all the way down each one of them, connect them on the end. That way they're all in series and I can mess with them, balance them that way. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and, it's been a little while since I've tested these batteries in all, probably a couple of years. So, uh, and the, matter of fact, I realize now these are the old type batteries. This is my old set where these screw into the battery. Now, I like the fact their surface is, area is a lot bigger than these metal studded ones. I, I never liked that, but they don't make them like this anymore. I may just go in and test each one of these again. Since there's 16 of them, that would be 16 days or two weeks of testing. Just to find out what they got, how much they've changed, see if they've, how much they've uh, digressed, or uh, it will give me a better idea on the how long these things are going to last. Especially this battery set here, it's the oldest. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and test them, find out what they got it, and then I can let y'all know kind of how long do these things last. How are they after three, four years? I'm going to test their resistance as well. See if they're putting up more resistance. That's a big sign. Of, of uh, aging as well and uh, i'll kind of show you what i'm doing with that here and i'll be putting this back on now i uh tighten them diagonally i go tighten this one and then this one and then i'll do this one kind of like a car tire and uh before i tighten them right now they're kind of they're loose they're loose i like to make sure the sides are the same when i'm tightening them 
because once you start tightening them, sometimes just one side tightens and it will stick out and it doesn't matter at that point, but at least that gives me a good starting ground. So that's how I tighten them up and I just kind of snug them up. I don't put any real torque to them. I just make sure they're snug enough, basically snug enough that if I pick this whole thing up, nothing falls out. Uh, so that's how I tighten them up. You're, you're not really wanting to over press them, uh, but you're wanting to make them tight. And when I built these, I went ahead and put a, I'm not sure what type of diameter plastic tubing on this steel rod just to make it kind of keep it from connecting these batteries or being everything else. You also got to make sure your inserts are, are not sticking out and that the, all the batteries are nice and flush before you tighten it. And make sure you're centered with the same gap on eight, all sides. I will typically uh, pick them up, and I, I can't do it with one hand. <laughs> uh, pick them up with, and make sure as I tilt them, they don't move or juggle. That's usually tight enough. Uh, and go from there. I also put them on, this is a nice... I like my desk. It's slippery, so I put a cloth on them. And I can slide one off to the side, and then even with one hand, as long as the stuff's not in the way, just slide it on back to the back now that that one's done. And then just slide this one over. Just a lot easier. Oh, I'd forgotten just how old these are. These are probably five years old or more. I'm really curious to see how these held up. Starts with nine because the first eight were the ones I got from China. I waited four months for uh, 280 amp hour batteries, which uh, I found out later after I bought this battery set. When I went on to buy this set, I finally spent the money. On this charger when I got to this third set of eight and that's when I tested this but this one was a uh, I'd been running for a good year or so and with the other set which was 230 uh, they were separate batteries again because it was a 24 volt system unlike a 48 I got now for this uh, it's gonna be interesting uh, I did test them when I got that tester and that's when I found out these were Kind of a mixed batch of stuff, uh, voltage-wise. This whole, all of my batteries are kind of mixed. That's one of the reasons I really don't know if I recommend buying these anymore. They are cheaper, but when you order them, wow, they could take a while to get in, and they're never quite. I. It wasn't until the very last set, few sets, when I was testing them and complained to the buyers. That I started getting actual 280 batteries. Now the last set of batteries, the last four I just added, believe it or not, were 300 amp hour batteries. So I was pretty happy about that, but it is going to cause a bit of a balance problem. Uh, but at least it's higher, so I'll get the most out of the other ones. I think it'll be fine, but that's one of the reasons I don't really suggest these batteries anymore. It's the buying of them. It's, they're Chinese and they come from Chinese. And they just, well, China just doesn't have to follow the same rules we do. So anyway, uh, but when you get them all together, you can, you can balance them and you can get the most out of at least the lower end batteries. That's what's going to restrict the whole battery is the cell that's the lowest. Kind of like the ca slowest car on the one lane highway. Everyone's going to go that speed and the battery's only gonna be as good as that now i may buy some more of these batteries that turned out to be 300 amp hours i tend to think i just got lucky and they just didn't have 280s so they actually sent me 300s i don't know but if i i may buy four more from them and if that's the case because some of these are lower i may replace some of these just to get a little bit more out of the battery don't know i may not waste the money when you do the price on these, these used to be only about a hundred bucks a cell. So it'd be eight hundred bucks, and then you'd spend another hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks on the BMS, and that's pretty much 
would make the whole battery. So you could get one of these 7.2s for about a thousand dollars. And server rack batteries back then were Jesus two three thousand dollars. So this used to be the best way of doing it, without a doubt. Uh, but nowadays these have all gone up to 150 a cell, and then the BMS. You're, now you're talking about twelve hundred dollars for the cells instead of eight hundred, and then another five hundred, uh, two hundred for the BMS. Now you're talking fourteen hundred. The server rack batteries are now about fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, now they're only five point one, so you're getting a seven point two here. But getting a good battery, uh, man, that's a that's a real challenge. It's a roll of the dice nowadays. It, I guess it's always been a roll of the dice. And if you want to buy these, I really suggest getting, sadly enough, spending another $300 to get this thing to test them. Now, this is another Chinese tool, and I've actually burned out one of these already. Uh, fortunately, it was fairly quick. I complained, and they gave me my money back. And then I cringed on buying another one. So this is my second one. It hadn't fried out on me. I hope I can get through these batteries without it having a problem. I don't know what the deal is with this thing. But it is making a loud noise now, and I have not had it that long. But that's really about the only way to make sure you're not getting ripped off. And like I said, I bought two 80s one time, waited forever in a day, and they were actually two 30s, and I had no idea. I have very accurate information on each cell, what it actually is capacity is, and you know. So it's a really nice tool if you're using these kind of batteries. One nice thing though about this is I can tell which cells are going out and I can literally have a stash of extra cells and replace them and keep the whole battery going again. So it gives me a little bit more versatility with this kind of thing. I don't know. I, I may go server rack next time. And I don't know if I've said anything. You can see kind of the grease I put on these. I use a grease as a very good conductor. But it actually makes the, con the contact better and uh works better that's the grease i use a carbon conductive paste and as you can tell on the lid this is a black stuff a pasty kind of stuff it gets everywhere so you and you're gonna have to use dojo a hand cleaner a grease cleaner to get it off your hands you, it is not going to come off but these are old school batteries they got they got the old studs that screw in which man you can strip those easy too and you got to hold it with an allen wrench as you're tightening it so it doesn't move or go in there and strip even more these are a little bit trickier to connect but they have a, a nice flat base there compared to the studded which you just don't have the surface area but they seem to work fine you know by the time you Put something on it. They get a, enough of a connection. When I do screw these in, I usually go this way, this way, and find the happy medium and tighten them like that. 